And the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation estimates that over 3 million Nigerians have lost about 18 billion naira to Ponzi schemes. This has caught the attention of the Securities and Exchange Commission and that prompted the recent workshop to enlighten Nigerians on the dangers of engaging in this quick profit scheme. The workshop was organized in collaboration with the Attorney General Alliance Africa. All right, Anthony Idiwe, senior partner at Bunuka Attorneys and Solicitors, joins us now to talk more about this. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Mr. Idiwe. Good morning. Thank you. Okay, let's first of all understand what the Ponzi scheme is all about because we have multi-level marketing and pyramid schemes. Can these also be termed as Ponzi? Well, a Ponzi scheme is actually different from a pyramid scheme, but they are both a part of what you refer to as investment fraud. A classic Ponzi scheme, however, is a scheme in which the money received from new entrants into the fraud is used to pay out the old uh, entrants into that fraud. Eventually, if they cannot recruit new entrants, bringing in new money, then it will collapse. So that's how a Ponzi scheme uh, works. The, the uh, pyramid scheme is slightly different. So most of the uh, multi-level marketing schemes um, you can refer to as a pyramid scheme. The difference essentially between a pyramid scheme and a Ponzi scheme is that with respect to a Ponzi scheme, all the uh, income which comes in goes to the primary promoter and then the primary promoter redistributes it to uh, the, the old investors. Why is collecting money from the new investors? Whereas in a, in a, in a pyramid uh, scheme, the, all the monies do not necessarily go back to the original promoter because they are in cells and levels and they distribute amongst themselves and there may be about several centers from where uh, the, the redistribution is, is done. So essentially that's the difference between uh, a Ponzi scheme and a pyramid scheme. All right, Mr. Edibar, you are part of the people that conceptualize the uh, training. Uh, why is this relevant and important at this time and uh, what does it seek to achieve? Well, you know, given the uh, very desperate uh, economic times for some people, which was complicated by the pandemic, there is a, a tendency for people to have the perception, and, and this is based on an excellent study that was done by Jack and Ibekwe in Nigeria, uh, that the general 50% of Nigerian uh, population based on the survey which they did, although they believe that Ponzi schemes are unreliable, however, they think it's an effective way by which they can uh, emancipate themselves from poverty to make a quick profit, a quick return. Uh, so because of that perception issue that over 50% of Nigerians know it is unreliable but yet want to do it. Um, and even those who think that it is not re uh, reliable, some of them still think that, that, that some think it's even reliable and then that it is effective. So if you add those who think that it is effective um, and unreliable, and those who think that it is reliable and effective, it comes to uh, close to 70% of Nigerians have that belief and, and they are likely to lose because the pyramid scheme or the Ponzi eventually collapses and they may not meet the expectation, particularly for those who invest later. Uh, whereas it is possible that those who invested earlier may get not only their initial investment, but possibly get unreasonable return. Uh, the later investors may get nothing at all. And so it's, 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 it's really very unfair. Apart from that, there is no fundamental underlying business 
uh, that the money is used to. And so it can move money which will be deployed to productive resources in the economy to unproductive use. And it can create a bubble that can collapse, leaving people in tears. It can even cause civil war hmm. in a, a, a country. Yeah, All right, All right Mr. Idibe. Yeah. Now, it is the responsibility of the Securities and Exchange Commission to protect investors and um, preserve capital market integ integrity. Now, aside from workshops such as this, what kind of regulatory strategy has or can the SEC apply to outsmart of this ever-evolving trend? Thank you very much. There are two points to dealing with this matter. The first one is to educate the public, build their capacity to make the right investment decision. And that is why we are having this training. The second one is for the regulator to act proactively. And the SEC is the regulator under the Investment and Securities Act 2007. Based on that, the regulator usually monitors the market. And when they get information about these um, uh, schemes, they move in and generally they will close it down. They will get, uh, uh, they will freeze the accounts, they would um, uh, try to identify the uh, victims, they will identify the promoters and uh, they take other steps, uh, you know, uh, to uh, deal with the matter. So they, 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 they including uh, criminal prosecution, and they work together with other agencies, such as the uh, EFCC uh, and the police and, and the central bank, um, uh, etc. So generally, uh, in addition to uh, that, they also try to regulate the market to provide an avenue for citizens to actually make legitimate investment by licensing uh, uh, fund managers, by regulating uh, fund managers, and regulating every investment. And license, anybody who wants to do the business is supposed to be licensed, who wants to do investment business in Nigeria, is supposed to be licensed by the SEC. So if there's no license by SEC, that should be a red flag to know that that company uh, is likely doing something like that. So where is the place of the law in regulating an uh, investment climate? And I'm also curious, what's the average lifespan of a Ponzi scheme? You know, can a Ponzi scheme last as much as 10 years? Well, it's possible. Um, and that's why, that's why you actually need a strong regulator that monitor the market and be able to do it. And so most Ponzi schemes in, in Nigeria do not last long. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that they, they offer unreasonable returns, extremely unreasonable. So, for instance, they offer that you can get 300% return on your investment one year, or you get 1% a day, or you get 5% uh, in 10 days, you know, which if you calculate comes to about 300% in a year. How many businesses can you do to give you 300% returns in a year? So it's so unreasonable that, um, you know, whilst they can get people uh, new investors, eventually they are unable to get new investors to get money to pay off the old investors because they are not doing any business, really. Um, and then it collapses. But if, also if you look at the more sophisticated ones, where they just give just a little bit above what you will get from a normal market, and then they guarantee it, which you shouldn't guarantee for investment. You don't guarantee investment because you don't know it can go up and go down. So they guarantee it. Uh, okay. And then at times they give the appearance that they are regulated and they can last for a very long time. Like the uh, Madoff in America was on for over 20 years. Mm. Well over 20 oh, years. Oh, okay, Mr. The, Mr. Idibe, uh, just a quick one, uh, you know, before I, I let you go there. Are, are, are there laws to ensure that um, offenders are punished and uh, perhaps victims get justice? Yes, there, there, are, there are laws in Nigeria. Uh, for instance, um, it, you, it, to, the, to the extent that you are collecting deposits from the public, it, it could be possible that you can... Uh, be charged for 
uh, operating an unlicensed bank. To the extent that you don't call it a deposit, you call it an investment, you, then you are supposed to get the um, SEC license based on the ISA 2007. And to that extent, uh, you, if you look at the provisions of the ISA, you cannot make any invitation to the public for an investment without the uh, registration of that instrument with the SEC. So they have those offenses. Then also, it's a pure fraud because you you are when you are when you are telling somebody that um, you will invest in uh, the money in uh, in gold or you will do it in you put it in whatever. Well, you are not doing that really. You are just siphoning the money, diverting it um, uh, from the account and transferring it out, and then paying the new people, uh, the old people with the new money coming in and then taking a portion of it. Then you are you are guilty of um, uh, liable for things like money laundering. Uh, hmm. Obtaining by false pretenses, etc. So there are many offenses under the Nigerian law that have been committed uh, by uh, these camps. All right, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Idibe, for sharing your thoughts um, there with us. We do appreciate your time, and when we call you again, please answer us. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank Anthony Idibe is a senior partner at uh, Funuka Attorneys and Solicitors.